huge thank you to everybody for joining us again this week. Um, again, this program has been an ongoing conversation, an ongoing part of the reconciliation process here in Canada. It's helping us identify certain key components or different corners of First Nation and Indigenous culture to help us better understand and appreciate these groups of people, these first people who live here in our country. In addition to that, we're also learning a number of life skills, different things to help us continue to be an active part of this reconciliation process. Things like the ability to love, the ability to be wise, the ability to follow these seven grandfather teachings, just as one example of how their culture can be very insightful to us. So this week we're continuing along that conversation and we're looking at love mm -hmm. as one of the seven grandfather teachings and this is going to be the theme for our lesson today and we have a few things to talk about and then a couple of activities as well to do. But before we go any farther, as always, I would like to start off our afternoon with a very brief territory acknowledgement. We want to begin every one of these sessions by acknowledging that the land on which we gather at is the traditional territory of the Indigenous peoples of Canada. Whether it's here in my Moncton campus, whether it's on your St. John campus, or whether it's in your home, the land of Canada is again that traditional territory of Indigenous individuals. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place where we now live and work. As guests on this land, we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. We also recognize the contributions of the Métis, Inuit, Mi'kmaq and other Indigenous people to the richness of our community, our provinces around Atlantic Canada and across the nation and country as a whole. We aspire to continue strengthening ties with the communities we serve and work in, as well as build a future together through learning and reconciliation. Thank you for your attention for the acknowledgement. I'd like to get us started off with a little bit of an activity here. Um, so this is a little icebreaker asking us, what is love? A lot of us may have an idea in our own mind about what love is. We may think about the love we have for our partner, or perhaps we think about the love we have for our friends or our parents or our children. But a lot of us out there have some idea about what love is. And to get us started out, I want us to switch those those brain gears into motion. Let's get things up and running and let's use our Microsoft Teams chat since we don't have uh, any physical post it notes here. I'd like everybody, whoever is willing, to please type your definition of what love is into our chat. What does the word love mean to you? Again, we all have different relationships which we might associate with love. We may identify that we feel love for a person or from a person. Some of the examples I mentioned that you might want to reference uh, to tap into for inspiration are things like your partners. People like your parents, your children. But if you were to provide your own definition of what love is, how would how would you define love? I see some comments are starting to come in. We have Catherine who who uh, typed in first, and she mentioned the words unconditional and judgment free. So the love never goes away, even when mistakes happen, even when there's hurt, even when there's pain. We still love that's something that uh, comes to mind for you and again judgment free so not putting our own biases and prejudices out there i think bias and prejudice is almost counterproductive to love in my own opinion <laughs> so a couple of more great comments coming in from Kristen: caring about others and making them feel wanted i think that's so important <clears throat> diversity is all about counting numbers recognizing that there's differences but inclusion is about people feeling welcome and feeling like they belong. Lay mentioned um, supporting people to move forward or to go ahead with their lives. I think love is also action, like you said, Lay, right? It's, it's caring for others and supporting other people's success. Natasha mentioned happiness, comfort, unconditional, great descriptors that kind of go around that idea of love. It makes us happy, it makes other people happy. It can provide us comfort. We can give love to provide others comfort. And again, that unconditional notion. Uh, Chloe has a great comment in here that love is an emotion that keeps people committed to each other. I like that word committed. If we're going to have unconditional judgment free love, 
that takes a certain commitment, doesn't it? That doesn't happen easily or, or naturally. In fact, it takes a fair amount of effort. We need to invest our time. We need to invest our energy, invest our thoughts into the person. And that takes commitment. I agree, love is commitment. And a couple of great points here from Kathleen as well. Non-judgmental, supportive and honest. I love the word honest. I think sometimes the thing that we can do that is most loving is say the honest, true things, which can sometimes be hard to hear. But again, when we truly love somebody, we can be honest with them. Because even when there is disappointment or hardship, the love is unconditional. It does not go away. Tina mentioned feeling like somebody has your back when the times are not the best, right? Things are getting stressful, getting a little dicey, and love is a feeling that you have that lets you know that somebody's there for you. Somebody loves you, and so they have your back when things are, are stressful and hard. Happiness, safety, I like that one. When we love someone, we want to see them safe. We want to see them well. We are loyal to them, like Chloe uh, Condo Cormier mentioned. Um, Armenia mentioned a feeling of affection towards a person or people uh, with their well-being in mind and a commitment to them physically, mentally, and emotionally. I like that. A little bit of a, a more detailed definition there. I think it's very insightful. And then our last one here is from Julia. Love is just, well, there's no restriction or limit. It just is. It's something that's there. It's something that out there that exists in our world. Love is one of those beautiful things that the more you give it, the more you receive it. You put a little love out there in the world and you're going to get a little love back in return. It's something that it's really hard to hold on to, but it's really easy to give if we're just a little bit mindful, a little bit more aware. So we all have our different ideas on what love is. I'd like to turn it over to a brief little video. And again, it's the, that same series that we've been watching together. And I just want to refresh the screen share because I'm a little concerned that I may not have included the audio. <laughs> and I don't want to make that mistake. The videos are so much better when you can hear them and watch them, not just one or the other. So although there's a lot to be said for the visuals and the audio of themselves. Um, it's best if we can try to get them both out there. So my Teams is just being a little slow while it's preparing the slides. There we go. So we're going to head right over here to the video and understand the First Nations interpretation of love from the grandfather teachings with our elder Hazel Dixon. I just noticed a comment come in that uh, there's some issues with the video playing there. Is that correct? OK, so that's all right, because there's always another way to do it. So just give me one second. We're going to do a screen share and we'll do it in the window and do a direct from the browser instead. Here we go. The second of the sacred teachings is love. The eagle is the symbol of love. It is a powerful word. To be at peace with yourself and able to express love to your family 
friends and community through your actions and words. Love is a mix of feelings and actions that show a deep liking for someone or something. Deep feelings can be for family and friends. You have to love and like yourself. Make sure to not to put everyone else's needs before your own. Love yourself. When you feel like no one cares, there is always someone that does. Love the people and the creatures of the world. We are never too busy to be kind, caring, and patient, even when it's hard. Love what you do and do what you love. Love life. Don't get lost in the difficult times. There's always something to love and feel good about. Love does not want what belongs to others, and it does not brag. It does not easily become angry or keep track of what others have done wrong. Love is full of joy when truth is spoken. It always hopes. It never gives up. The story is about a young boy and something he learned from his father. One night after a very long, rough day at work, my mom made dinner for us. She placed a plate of jam and very burnt toast in front of my dad. Not slightly burnt, but completely blackened toast. I was waiting to see if anyone noticed the burnt toast and would say anything. My dad just ate the toast and asked me, did I do my homework and how was my day? I don't remember uh, what I told my dad that night, but I do remember hearing my mom apologize to dad for burning the toast. I will never forget what he said. Sweetie, I love burnt toast. Later that night, I went to tell my dad good night and, and ask him, did he really like his toast burnt? He put his arm around my shoulder and he said, your mother put in a very long, hard day today and she was very, very tired. And besides, burnt toast never hurt anyone. But you know what does? Harsh words. You know, life is full of imperfect things and imperfect people. And I am not the best at many things. I forget birthdays and anniversaries just like every other human. What I learned over the years is that learning to accept each other's faults and uh, choosing to celebrate each other's differences is one of the most important keys for creating healthy, growing, and lasting relationships. Life is too short to wake up with regrets. Love the people who treat you right and have compassion for the ones who don't. We should love and accept everyone for who they are. Although they may look differently, uh, speak a different language, doing things differently, or have physical challenges. Sometimes hugs and kisses and pats on the back, that's an expression of love. Young children sometimes are more aware of things than adults and make some very wise comments. Billy, only four, he said, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know your name is safe in their mouth. And then the key to six, if you want to learn to love better, then you should start with a friend you hate. Wow. Carrie, age four, love is what makes you smile when you're tired. Those words spoken by the young are amazing. Words are powerful. They can be words of praise and encouragement. I care about you. These words are not soon forgotten. Love is the strongest power on earth. The three most important things to have are faith, hope, and love. The greatest one of them is love. In the garden of your heart, plant only the rose of love. Okay. So this video here, I find it's a short one, but it's very impactful. There are a couple of very, very important points about love that come up from this elder. And I think that when we start looking at our own definitions of love, some of these concepts from her are actually in our own understandings as well. So one thing that I noticed she mentioned is that love does not keep a record of wrongdoings. We don't keep track every time somebody makes a mistake or does something hurtful to us because it's not about getting even. It's about forgiving. It's about providing compassion. It's about unconditional love. It's that commitment to use some of your own words that we've heard. 
I also find that there are some very inspirational pieces in here, very simple ideas that really hit home. Burnt toast never hurt anybody, but harsh words can. What an insightful, insightful premise. Your mother is hardworking. She's had all these things on her plate and she still made me supper. The toast was burnt. That's not going to hurt this man, but him lashing out at his wife for burning the toast. That's going to put a wedge into the family, is it not? That's going to create distance and possibly, you know, throw off the balance of the family unit because somebody's upset and angry instead of forgiving and compassionate. There's another really great piece of advice in here given to us by a small child. Again, some of the best advice can come from the honesty of the young. And this child said, if you want to learn to love better, start with someone you hate or dislike, you find annoying, who gets under your skin the most. If you can learn to appreciate things about them, if you can learn to forgive their transgressions or the way they irritate you, if you can learn to appreciate their gifts and see less of their challenges, maybe that is a great exercise. Not only will you have the benefit of developing a positive relationship with this person, which in turn is going to be less stress, less harm for you, but you're also going to be benefiting them. Doesn't everybody win? when we create positive relationships instead of pay, uh, putting up barriers. And finally, one other very important point that came up here in the discussion um, was also that idea that we need to love ourself first. I think that's really important, is it not? Because if we can't forgive ourselves, appreciate ourself, well, can we appreciate anyone else? Can we forgive anyone else? It's certainly going to be a lot harder, I believe. So with that in mind, I think that uh, Elder Hazel had a lot of good points for us to start unpacking our day with today. And again, it may have been a short video, but I think it was packed, pretty packed. So this brings us along back into our PowerPoint where we're going to take a little look at the eagle. So in indigenous culture, love is considered a gift of the eagle who flies high above all others, closest to the creator, closest than any other being. They hold wisdom, they hold insight. The eagle holds many gifts, and so its greatest gift of all is love. The ability to have all of this wisdom and all of this perspective and still appreciate ourselves, still appreciate others, be patient, be understanding. He has almost like a visionary approach, the eagle. He soars high and sees an overview of everything as it is, all of the good, all of the bad. What an incredible vantage to have. What an incredible uh, perspective. And again, it's this perspective which allows them to embody love with all of that knowledge, that wisdom, with all of that insight. We're still at peace. We're still givers to others. We see the good. We accept the challenging. Judgment free, unconditionally, much like we've described love. Love is based on affection and respect and kindness. It must be unconditional. And again, it starts with ourselves. I need to find my own inner balance. I need to learn to love myself, appreciate myself, forgive myself. If I can't do that, I'm not going to be my best to be able to provide those same kindnesses to others. Now, the love does not stop with myself. That may be where I believe it needs to start, but again, it extends, does it not? Love is a very strong connection or attachment to a person, a group of people, a value, a concept, maybe even a tangible item or a thing. That attachment is based on devotion, admiration, a certain amount of kindness and affection. To the indigenous people, to love and accept yourself as living in peace with the creator 
and in harmony with yourself and those around you in creation. Love is to be accepting of yourself and others, and it needs to be given freely. I, uh, I find that this reminds me a little bit of the concept of self-care. When we think of love needing to start with ourselves, you need to nourish to flourish. You can't pour from an empty cup. When the plane's going down, you can't put on other people's oxygen masks for them before you've put on your own. There are so many analogies out there that remind us that if we can't take care of ourselves, provide us with forgiveness, provide us with compassion, provide ourselves with understanding, that life is going to be a whole lot harder to provide those things for others. And so I find those ideas of self-care really reflect this idea of love. We start with self-care so that we can care for others. We start with self-love so that we can love others as well. I do think that there's a bit of a problem though out there. Please tell me if I'm wrong. I'm allowed to be wrong. Um, but I have a feeling that we tend to be a lot more judgmental of ourselves at times than others. Not always. Sometimes our biases and our prejudices get in the way and we are much more forgiving of ourselves and other people who look, walk, talk and act like us because they're a part of the us group. So sometimes judgments get in the way, but sometimes it does a little bit of a flip. Sometimes we are our own worst critic, so to speak. We have a hard time forgiving ourselves or the little internal voice that comes out automatically doesn't say, oh, I made a mistake and I could learn from this. Instead, it says, wow, that was stupid. Why'd you F up so bad? We're really negative and harsh towards ourselves sometimes, especially with that little internal voice. And I think that self-love is something that we need to explore more often, more consistently, more constructively, because we aren't as kind to ourselves as we could be, and we need to be. So again, this leads us into self-care. So first of all, we need to be able to check our battery, right? We need to be able to take care of our body and our mind and our soul and all of those different things that kind of fuel us and motivate us out into the world. We need to know if we're at the top of our game, are we feeling great, are we feeling good? Or are we getting pretty close to empty where we're struggling and we're just feeling Ugh, meh? If you can't be in tune with yourself, then you can't support yourself. And again, if you are going to love yourself, then you need to be able to support yourself when you need it. When your social, your emotional, or your physical needs are demanding that you need to do something about it, you need to be able to recognize that and provide yourself with what you need. Self-care is all sorts of different practices. A lot of people think of it as being the stereotypical stuff. Oh, you know, taking an hour to myself to read a book and have a bubble bath. You know, nobody allowed in. There's your self-care. And that may be true. But self-care is a lot more than that as well. Self-care is the ability to say no and not feel guilty about it, to be able to define your boundaries and live within them. Self-care can be a little activity that's just an everyday activity, but it's special to you. Makeup and hair, for example. Some people might think, well, that's just something you do. If you leave the house, you make a choice that you're going to wear makeup or you're not. You put it on or you don't. You brush your hair or you style it or you don't. Like these are just part of things that happen. But you know what? I like makeup and I like hair and I like styling things and fashion. So instead of just doing those things every morning as an automatic part of my day, it's become a part of my self-care routine. I have an hour in the morning. I'm not going to be anywhere near my cell phone. I'm not going to be anywhere near the computer. I'm going to be listening to music that makes me feel good with the door to the bathroom closed. And it's my time to put, invest in me to make myself feel good. So self care can be those everyday little actions, but the difference is instead of being an automatic everyday action, it's done with mindfulness and it's done with intention. So self-care can be very multifaceted. It's all kinds of different things. It's creating those mental boundaries, those physical boundaries. It's doing that physical stuff for yourself. And it looks different for everybody. I mentioned hair and makeup and taking an hour in the morning and how that's self-care for me. Now, there may be a number of people on this call that say, hey, 
you make me get up an hour early to put on a bunch of makeup and do my hair like that is not self care. That's going to make me miserable. And that's the other thing about self care, isn't it? It's personal. What self care for one person may not be an effective solution for someone else. So the bottom line, if we're really going to try our best to boil it down to something that we can all take away, self-care is just the mindful use of different activities and different mental processes to keep ourselves feeling safe, happy and healthy and to ensure that our needs are met. It puts us at our best so that we can be there for others. I also think that a big part of self-care is the fact that we can forgive ourselves. So saying no in and of itself may or may not be easy for you to do. I can say no, but the problem I have with saying no is how I feel afterwards. Sometimes I feel guilty. Maybe I should have helped. Maybe I should have signed up. Maybe I should have done a little bit more. So the other side of self-care with saying no is how you mentally treat yourself afterwards. Right? If your friend was overloaded and busy, they had a lot on their plate, would you blame them for saying no and defining a boundary to keep themselves healthy? I'd like to think you wouldn't. So let's flip that around and remind ourselves that when we say no, other people may not necessarily be judging, putting us down. We don't know that for certain. So why borrow that trouble? Why beat ourselves up about it? Why put ourselves down and refuse to forgive ourselves for that? So self-care and self-love. We need to be aware and mindful, and we need to do those things to keep ourselves healthy. So, we have a couple of little activities that we're going to do together just to talk a little bit about self care and to talk a little bit about loving ourselves and loving others. I'd like to start off by showing everybody a little bit of a meditation song. The song is titled Eagle Feather, very reflective of today's topic. And you'll find that this indigenous piece of music is culturally based. So no, we're not listening to a pop song by Ariana Grande. We are listening to traditional music uh, from Indigenous and First Nations people. I would like to remind every uh, remind everybody about an interesting notion around First Nations music and traditional Indigenous uh, artwork. It is believed that songs are gifts from the creator and that the people who write them and perform them are the vessels that bring it into this world. And so when we hear a song, for example, the Eagle Feather, which we are about to hear, we want to remember that it is inspired by a feeling, a situation. It's inspired by history. It's inspired by something that these people have been through. And again, being able to perform it is viewed as being a gift and, uh, and their gift to provide that to us. So we're gonna take a few moments to take in that song. Um, this uh, this particular song is very relaxing in its nature. You'll notice that there is a, a lot of drumming in it. And again, that's very, very conducive for meditating. So if we're looking at maybe trying some new self care hobbies, trying to explore some new ideas that we could try to take care of ourselves, maybe meditation is something that you might want to explore. So consider that in the back of your mind. The second activity that we're going to be doing after we have a look through that is taking a little bit of time to figure out how we can show love to ourselves, friends and family. How can we better care for ourselves? How can we better care for others? So let's start off with a look at the meditation song. And I'm going to quickly refresh um, the screen share and bring this up in the browser where we had some audio troubles on the last one. We'll try to be a little proactive. So while the music is playing, I'd like to invite everybody to take a bit of time to meditate. Also, it's 
Thank you very much for sharing in this moment with me. This is one example of how you might be able to add a meditation into your life. This is just one four minute example of how listening to a song, taking a little bit of time to consciously think, what am I feeling? Who am I? What can I let go? And what do I want to hold on to? Just taking that little time to be consciously aware, to let go of your stresses and your triggers and to absorb the positive things in your life. This is just one way of incorporating a little bit of self-care. So coming back into our PowerPoint, let's have a quick look at that next, uh, that next little activity that I mentioned. So, as I mentioned, we can have love for ourselves. That's where it begins. But we also have love for our friends, love for our family. We have love for our parents, our brothers and sisters, our children. We have love for our beliefs. We have very strong attachment to certain values and certain beliefs. 
We even have love for certain tangible things. I love this beautiful card that the students made me this morning. It's a thing, but I love it unconditionally. It'll never go away. So let's talk a little bit about that. Oops, I'm going to pop back over here too. There we go. Our nice little feathers here. <laughs> what I want to do is invite everybody to grab a piece of paper or open up a blank Word document if you don't have a pen and paper handy. And I want you to make three little groups. Maybe it's three little columns or maybe it's, it's you know, your paper lined off in three different sections, whatever is easier for you. And I want you to start thinking about a couple of different things. First of all, what are some ways that you can love yourself? Maybe these are things that you already do and you just want to become more consciously aware of them so that you can use those existing skills to fine tune them and enhance the way that you love yourself. Or maybe these are new ideas and new strategies that you can use to show love for yourself, show compassion and show understanding. Again, ways to love ourselves and care for ourselves can be as simple as taking those day to day activities and doing them in a mindful way where we appreciate them and we have the boundaries that we need. It can also be something mental, things like forgiving ourselves, stopping our distorted or negative thought processes and flipping the direction on that train really quick, giving ourselves the same kind of forgiveness and compassion that we would give a loved one or a close friend. And on that note, the second one I'm asking you to do is think about how you love your family and how you love your friends. When you're compassionate to them, when you're understanding, when you're patient, what does that look like? Is it your tone of voice or the words you say? Is it the actions that you take or the things you do for them? How is it that you show love for your family members? How is it that you show love for your friends? And then finally, just an extra little thought to end it all off. How do you take care of yourself? That may seem very similar to that first one, ways you love yourself, but ways you self-care is a little bit different. There could be some overlap though. One way that you do love yourself is providing yourself with self-care, carving out that time for yourself, doing those activities that are meaningful, being forgiving to yourself. Those are aspects of self-care, but self-care can also be, um, you know, providing a budget for yourself so that you're financially stable and you know how much is coming in and you know how much is going out and you know what's what's going on. Self-care can also be making sure that you get a good night's sleep. You've eaten enough. You're not hungry. All those basic things. But that aspect of self-care when you actively use it is also a way of loving yourself. So again, there is an overlap between that first and third one. A little bit of a difference too. Now, as you're jotting these down, I also want to invite you, if you have anything that you would like to share to the class, to feel free to throw it into our Teams chat here. You may have different ways that you go about forgiving yourself, loving yourself, showing compassion for yourself that others may not have thought of. You may have different ways to provide yourself with some self-care, different strategies or different tips and tricks. For my CYCs out there, the child and youth care practitioners in the room, um, all of you have done a, um, all of you have done your self awareness module, I believe, by this point, and uh, I think Cheryl's class has as well. And so again, there's a self care kit in there, a project where you actually take the time to put together different items to help promote your own well being and your own self care. Items in there could be anything from a little gift card so that no matter if you're broke, you've always got a gas card so you can go for that drive to get out of the house and, and clear your air if that's what you like to do. Some of them have lists of resources, supports, and people you can connect with. One really creative idea that I saw in a self-care kit was a set of three envelopes. One envelope had blue popsicle sticks, one had yellow, and one had red. And on the popsicle sticks, something was written. So all of the blue ones, had special places that made this person happy or made them feel loved or made them feel supported. All the yellow ones were people that they felt strongly connected to that made them feel loved and made them feel appreciated. And the other one were special memories. 
certain events or certain times. So at any point they could go and they could grab a person, they could grab a place, they could grab an event and they could reflect on different things that made them happy, made them feel comforted, made them feel inspired. So having a kit, you know, that's that's one technique. And I can guarantee that not everybody out there in the world has thought of putting the time out to make one. So if you have some unique ways that you show love and compassion or forgiveness for yourself or some ways that you self care, please feel free to throw them out. And the same thing with the family. If you have ways that you show love to your family and friends, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, while while participants are throwing out their thoughts into the chat, I'll give you a couple examples of my own. First of all, ways that I love myself, I actively remind myself to treat myself like a friend. Because when I look at that second list, I love my family and friends by being non judgmental, by being patient. I don't raise my voice. I don't have judgmental responses. I always try to understand the whys or the hows, the reasons behind instead of just seeing things at surface at surface value. And so I need to remind myself to love myself better by doing those things. When I make a mistake, I need to not just put myself down. I need to do like I would with my family or friends. Well, that's OK. Provide some forgiveness, provide some compassion, and then maybe try to empower myself a little bit. I made a mistake, but isn't that just an opportunity for me to learn? To try again. That's how I would support a family member. That's how I would support a friend. That's how I need to love myself. One of the things that I always remind myself is treat others like you would treat or treat myself like I would treat a friend. And another thing I'm always reminding myself of is 90 10. And that's something that helps me show love for myself as well as for other people. It's Stephen Covey's theory that 90% of the world out there is based on your reactions and your responses to things, while only 10% is actually beyond your control. So the car is going to break down. You're going to have an accident. Um, somebody's going to say something mean or rude. Those things are going to happen beyond your control. But whether your day improves or gets worse, everything else beyond that point is all going to be on how you respond and how you react. Are you going to be patient? Are you going to be non-biased? Are you going to try to recover from that and move forward constructively? Or are you going to be negative? Start reacting to things. Ways that I self care. I also gave you guys a couple ideas. I have my own self care kit at home. So um, it's it's a little bit different than the ones the students make. It's kind of in multiple pieces, but I have little areas of different rooms which are designed to be self care items, if you will. Beside my desk, I have a whole shelf. This is something I consider to be part of my self care. I put pictures of my most loved individuals, including my pets on that shelf. All of my meaningful awards, thank you cards, things like that are up there and I rotate these items around regularly. It's always right beside me when I'm working. Makes me feel confident, makes me feel good. And I have little things like that in every room. I have a little basket in my bathroom that gives me everything I need if I ever want to have a little spa night little facial, a little uh, bath bomb or two, all those types of things, and a little basket in my bedroom, or sorry, in the bathroom. So those are some of my secrets to self-care, is I have physical, actual things that I've put together in different places. That's one of my biggest tips and tricks, and I make the active time. I turn off, I'm one of those people, I actually turn off my cell phone. That uh, that might not be self care for some of you. For some of you, your anxiety might shoot through the roof, but you would be surprised at uh, you know once you once you disconnect, once you unplug, how stress relieving it can be to actually have some time with just yourself and the people physically around you. So, any thoughts from the group on ways that you love yourself? ways that you love your family or friends or ways that you self care. Oh, I love that. Armenia mentioned when your day doesn't go well, instead of making it worse, think of the good. You know, there's a huge relationship between your thoughts, your feelings and your actions. 
Cognitive behavior therapy. This is one idea out there that will actually map it out for you pretty clearly. So if you're having a lot of negative thoughts, my day is going bad. This is never going to get better. This is awful. Everybody's out to get me. Everybody left home all at once because they knew I was going to work today. If those are your thought processes, you are building yourself up to be worked up, upset, stressed. It's not really loving yourself, is it? And it's going to affect your actions because when you're stressed and you're anxious, are you going to reply and respond the same way to others or to yourself? Or are you going to be maybe a little more short, maybe a little more on edge? I think that's a really, really great point. And Chloe has another great point here. Um, she mentioned different ways to love herself. She makes the time to do things that she enjoys and she lets go of mistakes. So how many times did Edison make a mistake trying to figure out the darn light bulb? A lot. And thank goodness he saw every one of those mistakes as an opportunity to learn. Because if we didn't, I might be sitting here teaching to you in candlelight and we might not even have electricity as we know it today to be on a computer. So I think letting go of mistakes and forgiving Chloe, I'm so glad you mentioned that one because that is huge. And ways that you love your family, admitting when you are wrong, sharing family meals. Um, I think those are great too. You know, again, actively carving out the time to be with people, appreciate people. Um, that is a really big thing. Just like taking the time to carve out that time to appreciate and love ourselves and care for ourselves, we need to carve out that time um, for our family. Something I do too, just to build on that, Chloe, is when I carve out the time for my family, I make sure that my my focus is on my family. So when we sit down and have that family dinner, that's the hour that my phone is turned off and on the counter because I love them. I want to show respect to them. I want them to feel included and feel appreciated. So they're getting my undivided attention. And I think that's also something I need to personally work on for my self care. I need to work on the skill of giving myself the undivided attention I need when I need it. Um, admitting mistakes when you're wrong again is a really big one because that impacts other people. So just being OK with it, and letting it roll off your back. Getting enough sleep, eating healthy, all great ideas. Dinner parties. Oh my gosh, that's such a fun idea from Jessica Melvin. A, a reason to get people together, have them over to your home, talk, socialize, enjoy some good food. Um, turning off the phone or putting it on do not disturb. Excellent ideas. Um, Kathleen mentioned that she loves herself first by putting her needs first. So it doesn't mean that you don't pay attention to other people's needs, doesn't mean you don't care, but it means you step in to help them after your own needs are met so that you have your toolbox packed. You are ready to go and you are at your best and prepared to to support them. I think that's great. So and I think that that not only shows love for yourself, I think that also shows love for others by making sure your needs are met. Um, being supportive family, listening, uh, having an active listening ear. Excellent ideas and Sabrina also had a great comment in here. Um, she reminds herself that it's OK to stop and rest. The world will still be here tomorrow. It's not going to fall apart. So a few resources from today and again, if you have any interest in checking out the videos or checking out any of the resources we've used for today, the PowerPoint has been put uh, right into Microsoft Teams. So inside the files tab up at the top, you will notice that there is a week one folder, a week two folder, a week three folder, and each of those PowerPoints have been going up in there. And there's also a recordings folder. So all of these recorded videos are available to you if you want to go back and rewatch something, if there's anything that you missed. So before we break for the day, I know it's three minutes to one and we have afternoon classes, so um, I certainly won't keep you, but I just want to give you one last chance. Anything you want to throw out there, any any comments, any thoughts, any questions on the concept of love, what it means for the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat others. No, no questions or thoughts before we wrap her up. All right, well, I'm going to throw out a homework mm -hmm. challenge for you. Oh, nobody said there was homework involved. I know you're all probably just right irritated, but it's fun homework. I promise. Your homework before we come back together next Wednesday is to do something for yourself, to show yourself that you love yourself. Take some time in the next couple of days and do something for you. Okay. All right, 
So on that note, let's wrap up the call and send everybody off into the world. Again, thank you all so much for being here today. Thanks so much, Corey. That was great. Thank Another you. Another great session. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's always great to have you guys. I, it's it's great because of the participation, right? It wouldn't be a conversation if, if you guys weren't here to listen and provide your input. And I really appreciate all of the messages, the comments, the um, committed attendance. You are wonderful, wonderful students and professionals. Thank you. Thanks again.